It was, uh, it was put out as Travis Porter featuring ATL. This is my song. So I felt like I needed to do what was best for my situation and let people know. I put Soldier Boy on the regular. Jeffrey Lee Johnson Jr., a.k.a. Roscoe Dash, born April 2nd, 1990. Today's feature in the early 2010s couldn't miss on hooks to hit songs as he literally gave them out left and right. So much so that artists have tried to run off with his songs on multiple occasions in seek of the sauce he controlled at the time. From 2010 to 2012, Roscoe Dash was the hottest rapper in the game, culminating with a featured spot on the XXL freshman list. That era was a weird transition point in hip-hop right after Lil Wayne's dominance, right before Drake became the it rap guy, mumble rap, melodic rap, and street guy, crash out rap, or what I like to call the Rico rap era we're in today. But back then, Roscoe's era, it was all about getting all the way turned up and partying until the lights came on, go to sleep, wake up, and do it again. It was a fun club time in hip hop, and Roscoe Dash was right in the mix of it, with the chance to become that era's T Pain, who had all but fizzled out by then. No thanks to Jay Z. Roscoe was the new it guy of the party boy swag era, and to have him on your song almost meant for sure you had a hit that was at least going to be the most radio friendly attempt you could secure at the time. With the buzz he was rapidly building, expectations came right along with it. For swag rappers like Roscoe Dash, I wouldn't say his expectations were the same as a Fabulous or a Wale or a J. Cole to be the best rapper and make hit songs that fill the void of real underground respected hip hop and rap. Roscoe Dash's expectations were for him to be a hit maker for years to come, own the radio all the way into the streaming popularity, and ride that wave into at least two successful albums. What's more is that his sound also had the chance to survive the next two eras in hip hop mentioned, where mumble rap was perfect for his style, as verses didn't have to make sense, just have a catchy beat and a good hook and you can gain streams and views all day. When melody rap hit, Dash could have enjoyed success in that lane as well, as his high pitched nasally flow could have matured from just swag hooks to the perfect match for that era. No one expected he'd only release one studio album that he doesn't even claim as his debut. He was one of the most talented of his era. Now he's answering questions to whether or not he's an Uber driver. What happened to Roscoe Dash? Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth Music. Let's get it, man. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. You can also send a super thanks by clicking the button below. Enjoy the video. Roscoe Dash is a rapper from Atlanta, Georgia that became popular in 2010 behind the controversial hit song All The Way Turned Up, originally released in 2009 featuring the group Travis Porter and YT. Going by ATL as his stage name at the time, Dash wasn't going to accept being seen as a feature on the song instead of it being what it was, which was his song that he allowed his friends Travis Porter to place on their mixtape until the song was actually beginning to blow up and leave Dash behind. He quickly let anyone listening know that the song was originally his, one he wrote while still in college for the beginning of the first semester until All The Way Turned Up blew up. He went and added Soulja Boy to the song and it blew up even more, separating Dash from the Travis Porter wave and creating a special lane for himself where like mentioned, he could have blossomed into the biggest hit maker since T-Pain. The new version of the song climbed to number 8 on the Billboard rap chart and peaked at number 46 on the Hot 100. He and Travis Porter would fall out because of the situation as Roscoe's career was on the rise and Travis Porter's coming to a close as far as popularity. The trendy hook guy lane didn't last very long. Stunt number 1. A Change of Era a lot has happened to Roscoe Dash within the music industry. From people attempting to claim his work as their own, to him writing one of Big Sean's biggest hooks of his career and almost receiving no credit for that as well. 
to having a popularity rise even he didn't expect and the rooms within the industry he was now able to be a part of. But the one piece of history he'll always be attached to is the era right before it all changed. Beginning the 2010s, hip-hop and rap was in an interesting place. Gone were the early to mid 2000s where being a rapper you were actually judged by how well you could rap or how complex and intricate your lyrics were determined how successful you could be in the genre. There was also another dance rap side of hip hop becoming experimentally popular where the song Laffy Taffy was a serious hit song that reached number one on the Billboard Hot 100 charts in 2006 and had the world snap dancing along with them franchise boys and their number one song as well I Think They Like Me and YT. Yup, hip hop came a long way from Tribe Call Quest to five word hooks making more revenue than songs that literally changed lives. But different eras present a chance for different styles and personalities to eat off the game and it's one of the great things about hip hop. Not all rappers are ready for that change in sound or era. In fact, most rappers can't find a sound that can transition to the next era or era after that and their careers are left behind. Roscoe Dash was never a great rapper or memorable for his verses in any sort of way. His hooks were really all that mattered as he had the perfect pitch and vocal drag that was hot in those days. The Kid Ink Flow. He became known as the swag slash turnt up song guy and he never found his way out of that description. Every song he put out was in that vein, so when the era went to Drake and eventually mumble rap slash op rap, Dash was lost in the sauce. He hasn't had a hit song since Good Good Night in 2011. Stunt number two, a flopped debut. We spoke about this in the past where achieving success comes after you've made it successfully through the threshold that divides longevity and a flash in the pan. Once you've made it through, you're good to have a smooth career where everything is in place going forward. In music, that threshold is a successful debut album. A successful debut means you've put out at least two hit songs that are catchy enough to create some sort of buzz and a reason a label gives you an album release date. So putting out a debut album on a major label is a huge deal. Roscoe Dash was expected to steamroll through that threshold and most certainly become a staple in the game for years to come. After his second attempt at All The Way Turned Up became a hit, Dash signed with Interscope Records and a scheduled release date for his album was in place. The hit song came out in January of 2010. Roscoe Dash's album didn't release until November of that year. Obviously an artist that would do well in a spring-summer release, him coming out fall-winter after almost 10 months was a ball drop and all but kill the buzz of the album. What hurt it even more was that it wasn't yet finished but released to Walmart and overseas before it was supposed to and not available in all markets like he intended and that hurt the sales side of the album. Under details of the album, it actually says bootleg as a form of release, which is oh so sad for an artist with the potential of Roscoe Dash. It had just 9 songs on it and sold under 10,000 copies first week. A disappointing debut that didn't push Roscoe Dash through the threshold as his career hung on by hooks and features ever since. Stunt number 3, Hiatus and then Roscoe Dash just disappeared from the scene. Not before having a great 2010 where he was featured on the hit song No Hands by Waka Flocka that topped the charts behind Dash's Midas Touch still fully loaded throughout that year. The song itself went three times platinum for Waka Flocka. For Dash, it was another hit that would be forgotten soon enough, leaving him in the same place he was as far as his career pushing forward. He releases an EP in 2011 of 7 songs and the radio hit Good Good Night that peaked at 91 on the charts. It was the last time he released a single of significance. 
he still was featured on the XXL freshman list in 2012. But after that, nothing from Dash until 2014, when rap was different and his sound was all but finished. All in all, Roscoe Dash had all the potential in the world. He made great hooks, turned hits, media trained and great for the industry, but bad moves with his career set him back and he never recovered. Later, he'd even be seen driving an Uber or Lyft vehicle, suggesting he fell off a lot harder than thought, although he denies these claims. Either way, Roscoe Dash was still a great artist while it lasted, but for these reasons, his growth was stunning. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth Music, and I'm out.